1968 Packard Bell test set. We're doing a life test on this. Uh, update August 13th, 2023. We just visited this thing. I believe it was August 1st. An IF transistor died. That video should have been released already. Um, there's often a lag in videos. I do videos and, and then I don't just preemptively strike what I had scheduled. I just kind of keep moving things forward. So this one will probably be several weeks after the previous one. But anyway, today, Sunday, uh, the set was turned on in the morning and about... 15 minutes after it was turned on, it abruptly shut off. I believe it blew the circuit breaker because there's no lights, no nothing, and it filled the house with a burning smell, that distinct burning semiconductor resistor smell, that really nasty. You can hear a fan running in the background. So uh, 13 days later, and, and actually it's probably only been back in service about six or eight days I don't know I'd have to look at the dates but we've had another failure and that that probably is we're starting to see these failures because it's summer and it's hot and we don't air condition the houses out here unless it gets really hot because electricity is super expensive and we just kind of don't need to run air conditioning all the time so yeah it's literally dead dead because in the previous video I replaced Put a light bulb in there and uh, it's it's like blew the circuit breaker so we're now at four thousand four hundred and eighty sixty one hours that seems like maybe a hundred and something hours so let's see what happens here so it's not that one did it blow this holy crap I saw the flash Where is that coming from? Oh yeah, there's the smell. Ooh, baby. This is a bucking transformer, if you haven't been following this from the beginning. This just takes about 5 volts off the line. Because uh, sometimes we're up around 123, 124. I wanted to be more in the line with 117, which is what this set was designed for. Um, when these sets were new the, in the 60s, the line voltage wasn't as high and probably not as unstable as, as it is today. Today it, today it kind of ranges from 120 seven down to 109 depending on how many of those Chinese through the window pipe vent air conditioner portable air conditioners are running in the city at one time drawing all the power that the electric cars so desperately need so that's what that's for and I put a circuit breaker on it and it blew that circuit breaker before it blew the one in the TV. Yeah, we got something going on here. I'm still not seeing it. Here we go again. Oh, it's inside that pot. It's inside this pot. That is the CRT bias pot. Man, and that thing really goes. Watch this thing go. I mean, we're getting fire out of that sucker. Let's do it again. Well, I guess I finally burned it open. Making an app is totally different than making... So here's the CRT bias pod. It goes straight from... B plus to ground 
great design there, Packard Bell. You'd think you'd put a resistor in there to sort of prevent this from happening. So when it carbon tracks, it just conducts the entire freaking 410 volts straight out of the power transformer. There's where it comes from. It just dumps that right into ground. Just like unlimited current. No wonder why it just blows a circuit breaker instantly. So we need a new 500k pot. Interesting failure. I'll tell you what we can do for right now because the CRT is still so strong in this it was turned all the way down. We can literally just terminate this and get it out of here. We don't we don't really even need this in here right now. Like I said, it was, well, it was all the way to ground, which maybe I shouldn't have cut that one. Um, now I, I guess I could take and solder this to ground. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna want to ground that. We're gonna want to ground the sim center terminal right here. For now, I just grounded the center. I left the 410 volt one just floating because that's what it did. It was carbon tracking from the 410 volt B plus to ground. Now, the way you adjust this is you put it in service mode, so you get a line. And then you advance your three screen controls until you get a dim line of each color. If you can't achieve a dim line of a certain color, then you advance the bias until you see that. So for instance, if I had red all the way up and I still couldn't see a red line, then I would start to advance the bias until I just started to see a red line. You always want one of your three screen controls all the way at max and your bias at the minimum to get that color. So it looks like I see a red and blue line there but no green. So let's see. So my green is all the way up so I should, I do need to replace the bias control. Because what I would do right now is just advance I turn the red and blue down and just advance the bias until I just saw the green and leave this all the way up. So the CRT is starting to age. So we are a little bit tired here on the uh, green. I'll turn red and blue all the way down. So yeah, we're not, yeah, the CRT is starting to get tired to where you need the bias control. Mmm, tender apples, nice soft breadcrumbs on the bottom, a little crisp from the breadcrumbs on top. Mm -hmm. Well, the breadcrumbs on the bottom mixed with those juices, it's almost like a mm -hmm. dumpling dough down there. Yeah. Dumpling um, dough. Mmm, apples nice and crisp. Some of those are a little bit softer, a little bit more broken down. Mm -hmm. It could be a little brighter. And the topping, really, really crunchy. Summer fruits, yeah, satisfying. Spectacular. Spectacular, Betty. Thank you. Thank you. So carbon tracking seems to be a big problem in these old TVs, these old color TVs. I, I see a lot of carbon tracking failures. I'm going to have to do some research on getting a 500K pot because it needs to be rated at at least 500 volts. Yes, resistors do have a voltage rating. You don't want to just put some cheesy audio pot in here that's designed for, you know, two volts peak to peak. We need a, we need a pot that's rated for at least 500 volts uh, DC.